Welcome back to Power Lunch, everybody. Pittsburgh-based Astrobotics inaugural lunar mission suffered a malfunction, fatal one, shortly after the launch, and the company is calling off the landing attempt. CNBC space reporter Michael Sheets here with more. What happened, Michael? Tyler, unfortunately, shortly, just a few hours, actually, after launch, they suffered a propulsion failure during uh, really just checking out to see how the spacecraft was doing. This was a, a lander that wasn't going to be landing until uh, late February. Now, they've been able to try to get this thing moving a little bit more and try to resolve some of these issues, but they're not going to be able to fully recover it. Uh, it's going to start tumbling out of control probably about Thursday, and they're trying to get as much data as they possibly can off of the spacecraft because the good news is both Astrobotic and NASA have upcoming lunar missions, so they're going to have another go at this either later this year or even in the next year. So this thing is basically just a full write-off. In other words, it's just going to go and tumble in space and tumble in space and it's going to run out of power. What was it intending to do? In other words, it was going to land on the moon and do what? For whom? So the idea here is that it's essentially a cargo uh, transporter. It's delivering 20 different payloads for a variety of government and commercial customers to the surface of the moon. And the idea that NASA is trying to uh, create with these missions is do low-cost delivery service to the moon. And that's kind of a, a newer idea. Instead of spending maybe a billion dollars on a really high-tech, super-powered lander, they're doing these missions for $100 million, $200 million a pop. And the idea is then instead of having only just kind of the single point failure, you have a bunch of different mm. companies working on missions. And, and the really key part there is that we have three different different American companies, all with landers that are going to launch here in the next year or so. So 2024 is really shaping up to be a bit of an American private moon race. And aren't we going to see another launch sheets? I thought maybe as soon as next month, different company, same idea. Different companies, same idea. Intuitive Machines, this time, they're publicly traded stock. And then later this year, we should see Astrobotic go again, as well as Firefly Aerospace, another company near uh, tech in Texas. They'll have their lander scheduled for later this year. And I think one a really important piece of why we're doing this is it's not just to deliver cargo because we want to deliver cargo for no reason. It's because also there's this growing international competition. There's an impetus as Russia has tried to this last year to land on the moon and crashed. India just landed successfully the first time. China has repeat missions going back. And there's a Japanese company, iSpace. They're going to do a second take on their first mission that went last year. So there's a really big driving force to, to get a presence on the moon and a, really a sustainable one, one where we're delivering lots of cargo regularly to the surface. Well, who's there to receive the cargo, Michael? <laughs> Well, you have, uh, you know, folks like you and me might be there someday to just sit down yeah. and have the tea we delivered from Earth. But uh, in the future, it's about trying to building out this infrastructure there. Yeah. OK. Michael, thank you very much. I, I just you worry about the cargo being left there. It, it'd be vulnerable to theft. It could fall. It could fall over. <laughs> Any, lots of things could happen. Well, Michael, thank you.